Hey guys, Ryan here at Plague Size Studios. Welcome back to the AX8 Tone Match series. It's been a while, hasn't it? Today, I'm going to try to cop the tones of me. So for the three of you that haven't heard me scream at the top of my lungs that I've released an EP, well, I've released an EP called Children of the Stars, and uh, this video, we're going to be going over the exact guitar tones that I used on that release. So it's going to be a cool video, I think, in that way, considering on all of the previous videos in this series, I've tried to take old album tones or an era of a band, all of which, or at least a vast majority of which were recorded using real amplifiers and mic'd up cabinets and real stomp boxes and try to recreate that in a digital format. Well, today I'm just showing you exactly what I use to record this EP because I use the Fractal AX8. That was it. That was the only piece of gear besides an outboard TC electronic mimic for a couple clean and lead passages where I wanted a pseudo double track thing, but I didn't want the full stereo width of double tracking and I didn't like what the AX8 enhancer was doing. So I'm going to be showing you the three main presets I use and I've actually thrown in a couple blocks like a PEQ block and a GEQ block to match my settings that I had in Cubase on the master guitar output. So basically what you're hearing should be damn near identical to what you hear when you play one of these tracks, except you're not hearing you know, say some multiband compression or the mastering plugins I use, but for jamming, it should sound identical. Because of that, you should find these presets to be a bit more mix ready compared to the other ones I've released in this series, with the trade off being that it may sound a, a bit mid focus, not quite as huge on its own. But if you just put this to drums and a bass guitar, then it'll sound really large. Otherwise, if you are just jamming on it, then you can always disable the high pass, low pass, some of the notch filters, and it'll kind of represent the blank slate that I started with. Otherwise, we're going to be going over cleans, crunch, rhythm, high gain tones across three different presets, which sounds like a lot. One of them is completely dedicated to that lower gain side, and then the other two are high gain and lead sounds, but for two different guitars. And the reason that is because I used two different guitars on this EP. The first of which is this LTD H338, which is possibly the worst eight string ever. <laughs> uh, it's not the worst eight string ever, ever, but it's definitely the worst one I own. But I try to turn its disadvantages into advantages in the way that I used it because for, I guess, a majority of this album's runtime, I'm using open tuning. So most of it was B flat open tuning, this one uh, currently is tuned to C open tuning, which is what I used on the song Magnetar with a G here. Now, I normally wouldn't recommend to do this crazy crap on a regular eight string guitar, but this one is actually only a 25 and a half inch scale length, you know, normal Fender scale. So it has a lot of trouble getting that, you know, real visceral chug sound, but what it does do well is kind of this Devin Townsend or Steven Carpenter style EMG tones, and that's what I try to take advantage of here. So um, on the one preset, I had to modify a couple of the pre-drive parameters to get it to sit right, but uh, this is the guitar that you're actually hearing for 
a good majority of the album with Stimulant and Absolution and again, Magnetar being what I recorded with this. For the standard tune material, which includes the opener Children of the Stars song as well as Kustos Hominum and a couple overdubs here and there and the other stuff, I use my NOF Custom Super Typhoon, which is in every way a superior guitar in my opinion and factually. Uh, tuning stability, the pickups are incredible. Uh, they're coil splittable, which added a lot of tonal options on those songs. Um, but initially I recorded those songs with my Agile 828. Sounded great, has the Tosin Abasi Fishman Fluence pickups in them. And tonally, it's actually a bit closer to the LTD, but I found with leads especially, there's just something I was not gelling with with that guitar for this kind of more melodic kind of project. However, when I plug this in, it's just, it's, it's gravy soloing on this between the neck shape, the setup, uh, everything just kind of felt more natural in here. And I wrote and played way better because of it. So I said, yeah, screw that. I'm, I'm using this guitar. Um, but I would definitely recommend the extended scale length, at least for this standard tune material. Uh, when I do say standard tuning, I mean E flat standard on the sixth string. And so you have B flat and F on the seventh and eighth. So it's Meshuggah tuning. So you can probably see why I had to make two separate presets to make these otherwise very different instruments more tonally identical. And I think on the final recordings, they sounded pretty similar. And it'll be a good thing for you guys, since if you are using a guitar with active pickups, you might find the one patch to be more up your alley versus the one that I made with this and vice versa. Of course, you can always tweak as uh, you see fit. But with that, let's talk about the tones I used on Children of the Stars. Let's start with the most complex setup that also happens to have the plurality of runtime on the EP. Uh, looking at the foot switches first, you'll see I have scenes one through four and then six through seven assigned to the same number on the foot switch, except for preset five, and this isn't actually correct, I'll have to change that, um, but it was right for me. So basically what I do here is change between the dirty and clean presets. That way I have basically 10 scenes within two clicks away, uh, which was especially helpful. I end up not taking advantage of a lot of these scenes. I just set them up in case I did want to use them. My approach to this was kind of just make cool tones and see which ones I use rather than dial in for a specific uh, solo or a specific lead, that kind of thing. So for this high gain active preset specifically, I ended up using one, two, three, four, and six. I didn't use seven or eight and scene five also has some information, but I didn't use it either. So starting here with my open tuned LTD, which sounds something like this on scene one. <laughs> That served as my main rhythm sound on three of the songs, so going through these blocks one by one, we'll skip over filter and compressor right now since I don't use them on here. Starting with the drive block, I begin with a super overdrive, which many of you will know I'm quite a big fan of. I have basically the stereotypical seven string boost dialed in with tone almost maxed, level maxed. Just a touch of drive, I feel zero doesn't have quite the same kind of break up the same touch of compression that dialing in say zero to one does. Um, and this was what I settled on. I decided not to, you know, go too many digits over just out of uh, time saving, but I also took advantage of the EQ here and shifted up the mid frequency. And this is something that if I play with real amps on this guitar, I absolutely find it necessary to do. So usually pairing like a graphic EQ with the super overdrive because by itself, it just doesn't cut it. Um, because these are some chunky pickups. They uh, are even worse than most stock EMGs, I find. But throwing all that together, you get a really cool boost sound. So without it, it sounds like this. And that's pretty boring and shitty. So with it. That's what a metal amp is supposed to sound like, in my opinion. Moving on to the gate block, I've got a fairly conservative setting here with a quick release, uh, decently high ratio. Threshold's not too high considering the boost we're getting on the drive block, but when you use that in conjunction with the input gate, it drowns basically everything out. I mean, you can, you can hear there's not a whole lot if I turn the volume up. 
slap around the strings. That's about all that's coming through. Onto the amp block, which is perhaps the most important of the bunch here, is the USA Lead Bright Plus, and that is the Mesa Boogie Mark IV with the bright switch engaged. That's when you pull the drive pot out on the real amp, and the mid gain option flipped on the back of the amp. Uh, you have two options to choose from, which is harmonics and the mid gain. Generally, I play harmonics with most guitars, but I found with the way I was using the, the drive pedal here, and I wanted that super saturated, you know, like Metallica 2C plus tone going on, I decided the plus was actually the one that worked out better for me. With input drive, overdrive matched at eight, bass pretty low, mid seven, treble a little over noon. I uh, found that was a, a good chunk you know, platform sound to, to put a boost in front of. Normally, this wouldn't work for most guitars. You'd have to turn up the treble if you weren't using a uh, an overdrive up front. I kept presence at noon and the master volume at seven, which is kind of high for me. Usually, I, I like to dial this back to four or five, but that's generally when I engage the, the fat switch on the amp, which I did not hear. The fat switch is like the magical lead button, or if you're putting a, uh, say, of a, a overdrive or a boost pedal that cuts a lot of bass, I generally like to activate this. But for this guitar, it's so bass heavy anyway that I found it wasn't even necessary, so I kept that off. And of course, didn't put bright switch since it's already modeled here. The most important part of the Mark amp is definitely the graphic EQ. Uh, this one, I've got the 750 pulled all the way down um, in typical Metallica fashion. 2200 in touch, 6600 pulled down a little bit since this is actually affecting closer to like the 42, 4400 region. Uh, 240, I pulled down quite a bit just to leave some breathing room and uh, kind of scoop out some frequencies for the bass guitar to handle, and then bumped up the low end just a tad because it, it doesn't do a whole lot once you pull this down so far. As far as the advanced parameters go, I, I don't think I've really touched much of anything. I might have bumped up speaker drive and compression just a little bit, and I uh, don't think I even touched dynamics, and the thinking for that was I want it to sound as close to the real amp as I can, but ultimately I wasn't necessarily trying to go for the most realistic guitar tone. I was just trying to be able to emulate this later if I wanted to on my actual amplifier. After that, I add in a graphic EQ block, which just kind of dials up some of the ampier frequencies, I guess you could say. It's not the biggest difference in the world, but it does change the overall texture of the Post EQ, I find since the five band is it's a very important sound to the boogie, but it's not necessarily the most um, articulate or precise. So I always like to pair it with a post EQ. Without it, it sounds like this. And with it. Pretty subtle, but it is one of those things that just makes it glue together in the mix a bit better, I find. For the cab block, this is pretty standard stuff on uh, Fractal firmware. This is the stock 60B T75 and the German 4x12, which I'm pretty sure is, is still a, a V30 loaded cabinet. Now, normally when I record, I have these hard panned left and right, and then I mix them accordingly. Generally, the T75 is just a, a couple to three decibels lower in the mix than the German, so if you wanted a perfectly capture that then you could center pan these and and you know play with the levels but i find this uh slight offset does sound really good when playing alone and even sounds good recorded but um, that is definitely a piece of recording advice that i follow myself is to separate the cabinet blocks and mix them back together uh, that way you have options later on i didn't put on proximity since i have plenty of low end going on on the amp blocks and my low cut is at 90 hertz, high cut is at 12,000, which is pretty high for me normally. But when you're in this kind of low tuning and you're competing with these sampled, you know, orchestral instruments, I found it kind of handy. These PEQ blocks weren't actually in here when I recorded. These were the approximate EQ settings I put on the master bus in Cubase for the overall mix. So this is kind of the final version of the sound that you'll hear on the recording. Um, so without it, this is like the blank slate that I actually recorded with.
Again, it's kind of a subtle difference if you don't hear any of the other instruments in context, but uh, nuking some of this annoying resonant frequency garbage that's going on here definitely helps. Boosted the, the mids just a tad, and uh, a touch of a low shelf just kind of helped it settle in a little bit. Um, so this is one of those things that if you're just jamming alone, it'll sound better without it, but put a bass guitar, drums next to it, it actually works pretty well with it. On to the secret sauce we have delay and reverb, which is a trick I absolutely stole from Devin Townsend straight up, not even going to pretend I didn't. Um, but I use this in a, a different way than he might. So I've got a mono tape with, really I didn't mess with too many of the parameters. I just find these uh, these kind of delays, especially the mono ones, just work perfectly. It's the stereo, you know, like the, the feedback ratio and all that kind of stuff I, I tend to screw with more. But I did turn up the drive a slight bit, if I remember correctly. My time generally depends on the song itself. I don't necessarily have it, all of them tapped. As you can see, I can turn it on to, to do so if I want to. Um, and I don't even think I have but a slight modulation here, and it's probably not even noticeable. But overall, when I use this in conjunction with the studio reverb to kind of smooth it out a bit, you can't really hear it all that much while the guitar is playing and see if you can see what I'm talking about. The guitar is definitely still front and center there, but listen what happens when you turn this off. Suddenly, that concert hall, large arena, you know, slap back is completely gone. And using these, I found I didn't even need to quad track because it filled in a lot of that sonic space that you might otherwise find you, you need to quad track guitars for if you're doing something that's completely dry. So I, I really liked how this turned out. I still jam on it a lot. It's dangerous in the fact that you can get sloppy if this is what you monitor with but I ended up monitoring a dry tone when I was tracking and then used this after the fact to, uh, to get the, the end result. And I think it turned out really, really cool. So that's basically the rhythm tone in a nutshell. It's super overdrive, gate, throw in some graphic EQ to taste or parametric EQ to get your guitar to sound right. Uh, Mesa Mark IV, some extra graphic EQ, cabinet, some mix EQ in post. Mono delay, stereo reverb, double track that, and it sounds pretty damn massive. Now moving on to some of the lead stuff, which I probably should have a gate here, <laughs> uh, at the very least to shut off the background noise. This is when I start turning on compression. Um, I'm picky about compression, but the optical one does kind of work. Um, I'm using this preset for tapping mostly, so I find compression is a must to clean up my, my sloppy crap tapping <laughs> uh, during those parts. I've moved over to a separate instance of the Super Overdrive. The tone's still pretty much max level max. I turned up drive just a little bit just to add a little more dirt. Bass is rolled off, but I didn't touch middle and treble. Uh, I, I'm using the neck pickup mostly on this configuration, so it worked out. If you really wanted to be CPU conservative, you could absolutely set these on scene controllers and whatnot. I did that on my live preset during a playthrough, but for recording, I just found it was easier to do XY. Uh, pretty much same gates, using the same amp, uh, GQ still on. The cab, I've switched over to V30s only on this German V30. Um, in fact, you could turn up the low cut a little bit to, to get the stuff to sit a little better. But um, I find switching the cabinets is a big game changer. It basically gives you like a, four sounds to play with out of two amps and two cabinets. So I like that approach, and this is a very large sounding cabinet. This was the PEQ I used for the leads mostly. Um, I ended up cutting off the low end too a little bit, I believe, but uh, just a big mid hump to, to get it to sit out. Um, the enhancer block is on without a whole lot of depth, but the width is maximum. So this is kind of like I want a semi wide thing, but not a fully double track sound, um, you know, without losing too much information in the center channel. So I found this worked pretty well. Uh, chorus, do have a, a slight digital chorus going on here, nothing fancy. I find, uh, you know, I like to use the dimension as well, uh, but for this overdubbed thing, the, the digital stereo adds a little bit more width. Delay, 
I've switched to stereo tape here, and I've not messed with too much of the deep parameters. I've got the ratio at 95%, so there's not that much of a spread in terms of the uh, feedback or the time, that kind of stuff. But it, it does have a lot of stereo depth, as you'll hear, a touch of modulation. This is pretty much stock as well as the EQ roll-off. And finally, I'm using the Deep Space Reverb for some insane diffusion and uh, lingering time. It's up to seven seconds. Again, a lot of this stuff I didn't have to mess with too much. I was just looking for sounds that worked really well. I might have turned up a couple parameters here. Um, EQ, I know I left alone, and everything else is pretty much stock. So with all that, you get this. And I'll turn on and off a couple of the blocks to show you the difference and why I ended up using them. So plenty of echo wankery going on in that one. Scene three is where we start to get into bona fide rectifier tones. I've switched to a pedal compressor for this one, just to get a little bit of a different sound back to my standard super overdrive setup. For the amplifier, we're on rectifier red, and this is kind of a strange setup. I would normally would never run something that sounds like this. Um, generally, my rhythm tone is, you know, crank bass, middle about here, treble around there. Um, but for this one, I decided to boost the input drive for a lot of saturation, keep the tone stack closer to noon than it normally would, boost presence and keep master volume on the low side. Ended up not touching anything else as far as I can remember. So this is the classic Mesa Boogie, uh, you know, original rectifier red channel. Going through the same rhythm cabinet setup, I'm using the same parametric EQ as I did before on the lead tone, same enhancer. Chorus is when I switch to Dimension 2, have the high mode engaged. Basically, everything else is left mostly stock, except perhaps a little bit of uh, increase on the depth. Still back to the stereo tape and back to the studio delay, or studio reverb, rather. And combining all that, it sounds like this. So I tend to use that kind of tone when I would want the solo or lead to sit a bit more in the background to kind of act as an overdub. Um, or if there's like a clean guitar underneath and I've already filled out, I, I feel some of the uh, the heavy mid-range that I otherwise would for a solo. So this is kind of uh, one I only used maybe two or three times through the entire EP, but uh, it's one that I've found pretty valuable nonetheless. Moving on to scene four, we're back to rhythm, except this one is basically the same as scene one except lower gain and that's what this filter does in essence this mimics the sound of at least this guitar when you roll off the volume to about two and a half to three there's a slight bit of treble bleed i'm going to boost there just to increase some of that bite um, and then i also disabled the delay but otherwise it sounds the same and this is the sound you'll hear on like the beginning of stimulant when it's not quite full gain yet but it still sounds like the same amp <laughs> Scene six is the last of the bunch that I use in this preset. This is my full-blown lead tone, and it's a completely different setup than the rhythm. So I've gone to the different preamp sound, gone to the V30 German cabinet. All the other blocks are basically the same, except mixed and matched. So you've heard all these before. I'm just pulling in and out, depending on the context, back to dimension for chorus, stereo tape, and the studio reverb. And it sounds like this.
That brings us to the next preset, which is for all intents and purposes, basically identical, except for the drive block parameters. So I'm using my other guitar on this one, sounds like this. As you can hear, that's more or less the same tone, except I've got a different guitar with uh, longer scale length, tighter strings, but that's about it. And the way I did that was to compensate in the drive block, turn the tone down quite significantly, drive all the way to zero, as well as the mids only to one decibel. I kind of feel this set of pickups being that they are more voiced in the, the vintage style, already have this hot mid range to them. Um, so it doesn't really need that crunchiness or pronounced mids to sit well with this amplifier. Other than that, though, I don't think I touched a damn thing. The cut switch is still engaged, but I don't think I did anything with the low frequency cut and everything else is identical. I ended up not needing the fourth scene, but everything else I used as, uh, as I would with the previous preset. And it sounds basically the same. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously a different guitar, but... Um, I don't think it's really a jarring difference when you jump between songs. That's basically it for the high gain tones, which brings us to the clean preset, or mostly clean. Uh, starting off here on scene six, this is the only time I used a clean sound on the Super Typhoon. It sounds like this. So that is extraordinarily clean, even by my standards. We have an optical compressor running into the USA Clean model, which is, of course, the Mesa Mark IV Clean channel. Uh, no graphic EQ, as I would normally run it. Very slight bump to input drive, bass, middle, and treble at 5, 4, 7.5, roughly. This is not quite how I would normally set up one of these amplifiers. I tend to like the Magic 6 settings from Fender pretty well on here, but um, for this sound, I liked a little bit more bass. High presence, bright switch on. And then the cabinet using the same T75 and V30 sound from before, which normally I wouldn't always do that for clean tones, but as this sits underneath uh, the mix of, you know, kind of background keys and a lead anyway, then this worked out pretty well. This is again the approximate parametric EQ setting I had in uh, the master bus, so thought I'd just throw that in here. Cut to that nasty frequency once again, a bit of a mid boost. Enhancer block and chorus is the 80s style. I quite like this. This is like just that stereotypical 80s chorus on cleans, and it worked really well here. Stereo tape and studio reverb once again. So pretty straightforward with just basically the, the only change being the drive section. One thing to keep in mind, though, is I specifically tuned this for single coil sound, so I'm using the neck pickup coil split. It does sound good otherwise, but it's a lot darker, so you'll have to keep that in mind. Um, this is kind of the different sounds you can expect out of that. And then with a the humbucker. Humbucker middle. and then split coils, but still center position. Which you can hear, you can definitely get in trouble with the, uh, the background hum if you're not careful, but I was intentionally going for that like mid eighties 
crime drama, clean guitar kind of sound. There was something about that that uh, I thought was pretty cool. So that's the only time I use cleans on the Super Typhoon and the other scenes within this preset were specifically for the LTD. Let's go to those. Now, since this guitar lacks any coil splitting capabilities, I ended up using the center position exclusively. It has kind of a cool treble roll off thing, but it's also very even tempered, kind of how you would expect the John Petrucci center humbucker sound to be, except in an active form. So starting here on scene one, this is one I ended up not using, uh, but I think it's a cool sound anyway. I thought about using this as like an introduction, but uh, it's just a volume swell preset using a, a crystal pitch block beforehand. Everything else you've pretty much seen before, except digital stereo, which is mostly a copy from the high gain patch. And then we're still sticking with the deep space reverb, but a ping pong digital delay in the delay block, which once again, didn't really touch a whole lot of in terms of parameters. The main two sounds I used on this guitar were scenes two and three, with three kind of being the more dry version, uh, still using graphic EQ, but I did turn on a drive block, which wasn't previously there on scene six. This is just to give some high frequency split coil spank to this sound that is otherwise absent. So here it is with and without that. Scene two is almost exactly the same with the exception of the 80s chorus block turned back on and I would use this if there's, you know, other keys or uh, orchestral instrumentation going on on top of it, uh, so for instance, within that same song. The other scenes I've set up just in case because I do like to use the Rhythm 2 channel on the Mark IV as well. Uh, none of these are particularly perfect sounding because I'd never tweak them. Uh, just mixing and matching to see what would happen for the most part. But uh, on scene 4, I've gone ahead and set that up. So if you do want to experiment with that, you have that option. And between these different configurations of presets, you basically have 10 scenes and four channels worth of amplifiers to play with. So I think that's pretty cool. And that's more or less my entire tonal palette used on Children of the Stars. I definitely plan to do something quite different on the uh, upcoming releases, both for and not for this same project. But uh, especially for Seed Durham, it'll be kind of in this, this same vein. But what I found with a lot of these tones is I wouldn't necessarily come up with these in a vacuum, um, they very much spawn from, I need to convey this kind of sound or this kind of idea and, um, ended up making a few things that I normally wouldn't, that are either a, a little more, uh, Alex Lyson inspired or otherwise just proggy that, uh, you know, normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at. So I guess that's a good piece of advice. If you want to find some cool tones, try to write some different stuff, you uh, just might stumble upon them. So that'll about do it. As always, these presets will be available in the links in the description below. I'm going to try to have this for AX8, Axe FX2, as well as Axe FX3. So if there's a problem with any of those, do let me know. I'll try to get them fixed. And uh, hopefully when the FM3 comes out, they'll be compatible with that as well. 
So any other questions, comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Bye.